The second part of this section has to do with combining random variables. So, um, in this, I, I gave the example of if you have a variable t and you're adding x plus y, you're adding two that you've defined as x plus y. What's going to happen is that your expected value, which remember is the same thing as your mean, that's going to just add your means together. You don't have to do anything more. The tricky thing is finding the standard deviation. Standard deviations with combining are not going to add together. You are not allowed to add them. What you are allowed to do is you are allowed to add the variances. So then the next thing that I'm going to do is the, remember the variance of something is the standard deviation squared. And so we are allowed to add our variances. So what's going to happen is we are going to get the, um, the standard deviation of x squared plus the standard deviation of y squared. And remember, we refer to this as the variance of y. So in the end, our standard deviation of t, our new variable that we got by combining, is going to be found by taking the square root of the variance of t, which is just going to be the square root of our two x and y standard deviations squared. This might look similar to the Pythagorean theorem that you saw, um, you probably saw it many years ago, but it's actually the same idea, is that you have two things squared being added together. You solve it by taking the square root of the two things that you added together. Okay, so for the variance in the standard deviation, in order to do this stuff, we have one small stipulation. So in order to do this, x and y must be independent. Now, they don't have to be independent for um, the expected value, but to do the, um, to find these standard deviations and the variance, they have to be independent. Just and remember, that means that one of them won't affect the other. So just kind of keep that at the back of your mind for now. You'll definitely, it'll come up again. Okay, so we're going to do another example with El Dorado Community College. And actually, we have a whole bunch more with it. What we're going to have now, though, is we have a campus downtown. It's a different campus from the main campus they mentioned in examples one and two. And we're going to let y be defined as the number of units taken by a student at the downtown campus. So we're going to start by determining the mean and the standard deviation of the units. So to find my mean and standard deviation here, it is the same thing as you were doing in the previous section. You're not going to do anything different here. Notice how we're not combining anything yet. So don't let this um, trick you. It's, it's the same exact thing as what we did before. So the mean of y, or the expected value of y, is going to be uh, similar to what we did before. It will end up being 15 units, though. And the standard deviation is going to be the same as what you had before also. It's the kind of longish formula, but it's, it's not going to be that bad in this case. So we, we end up with 12, we subtract our mean, then we square that value, multiply that by 0.3. The next part of this is really nice, because we have 15 minus 15, which we know is 0, so that term is going to go away, which is very, very nice. Um, then we're going to have plus 18 minus 15 squared times 0.3. Our final answer in the end is going to end up being 2.3. I recommend that you work this out on your calculator just to get practice with it. But you do get 2.3 units, and that's the standard deviation in this case. So before we start example B, um, I think it's a good idea to write down what you already know. And with all examples that are complicated like these where you're combining variables, it's a good idea to start by, by writing out all the information that you already have from previous things. So 
From part A, we know that the mean of Y, which is the average number of units of a full-time student at the downtown, is 15, and that the standard deviation is 2.3. And if you go back to example one, we'll find that the mean of the X, which I'm going to call, um, which we had, remember, was the number of units from the main campus student. So um, that was, we had that the, the mean of that one was 14.65, and the standard deviation was 2.06. So that was on the previous video. You probably have it in your notes. So, um, and then I'll just write what our variables are. You don't need to write all this out every time, but if you're getting stuck on a problem like this, it's, it's always a good idea to start off and just write what you know already and to find your variables. Okay, so they're telling us that we're randomly selecting one full-time student from the main campus, that's an X, and one from the downtown campus, that's a Y student. And we're going to add their number of units. So what we're doing is we're calling S, is what they're calling this, they're doing X plus Y. We are combining two random variables here. So this is asking you to do two things. And the first thing is to construct the probability distribution of S. Actually, when I wrote this question out, I didn't realize how complicated it was. But I would like you, if you would like to try this, it's a good bonus type question, you're welcome to try it on your own. What I will say is that S is going to be, there's lots of values. So this is, this is my optional thing. You do not need to write it down. But S and the probability of getting S, it's going to start at 24, and it's going to go all the way up to 36. There's going to be a lot of values. So that's why I'm going to make it optional. It's really, really long. So if you want to do it, though, um, give it a try. If you want, I can, I'm happy to check your answer tomorrow if you decide to do it on your own. Okay, so I'm going to go straight into finding the expected value of S and the standard deviation of S. And remember, expected value of S is the same as the mean. Those tend to be used interchangeably in this type of thing. So with expected value or with mean, all you're going to do is add up the means of the previous thing. This is going to be very nice. You, we have those above. It's just going to be 14.65 plus 15. So don't try to overcomplicate that. The standard deviation, on the other hand, is quite a bit more difficult. So the standard deviation, what you're going to do is you are going to, you, you can't add the standard deviations together, but you can add the variances together. So I am actually off on the side. I know that the standard deviation of y is 2.3, the variance of y is that thing squared. And the same thing is going to happen with um, the standard deviation of x. The variance of that is 2.06 squared. So you add your variances, but once you have the variances, you have to take the square root of what you added. So I'll write out the work for that one. We end up with 2.3 squared plus 2.06 squared. From there, we're going to take the square root, and once you do that, you end up getting uh, the square root of 9.534. That's our variance, by the way, which is going to give us 3.088, and that's the answer for the standard deviation. So for the next example, we are going to look at costs of books and costs of tuition, and we're actually going to try to find the mean and the standard deviation of the total costs of books and tuition put together. And they even give us the mean and the standard deviation of the original. So remember to find the mean, the new mean, which I'm going to write as mu with a subscript of C plus B. That's my mean of C plus B. All I need to do 
is add together the two means that I previously had. It's going to be 153 plus 832.50. And this um, mu of C, by the way, was found in example number two, I believe it was. So um, you can look back at that if you want to know how we found that. The, the, the mu of B is actually, that's a new one that they introduced for this problem. So to find our mean, we just add these two together. You end up getting that the mean amount that a student, randomly selected full-time student pays is going to be $985.50. All right, here's the, here's the weird part. So if you think about it, the amount they pay in tuition and the amount they pay for books, those are going to have an effect on each other because students that take more classes are going to tend to have to buy more books. So actually, we cannot claim that they're independent. So um, we, we cannot calculate the standard deviation here. And that is because the tuition cost and the books cost are not independent. Now, generally, you will not get a question that asks you to calculate the standard deviation when you actually can't calculate the standard deviation. Usually, the type of question that you'll get for this is you will be asked, why can you not calculate this? And then you'll be able to say, oh, well, tuition costs and books are not independent. They will affect each other. So you're not allowed to calculate the standard deviation. So in this example, they take into account a whole bunch of different things. So um, first of all, we, earlier we said that x was the number of units for a student at the main campus, y was the number at a downtown campus. Um, they give us the mean and standard deviation of each of those. They also tell us that at the main campus, full-time students pay $50 per unit. And then at the downtown, we know that um, the average number of units was 15, the standard deviation was 2.3, and that students pay $55 per unit. So the question isn't um, completely clear, but what they actually want you to do is they, they want you to randomly select a student at the main campus and a student at the downtown campus, and they want you to add together their uh, the amount of tuition that they're going to pay, figure out the mean and the standard deviation of that. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the mean of the cost and the standard deviation of the cost for each of these. So the mean of the cost of my x, my main campus, is just going to be 50 times 14.65. And I believe we found this earlier, and it ended up being 732.50. The standard deviation of this, we also found earlier, it was 2.06 times 50 which gave you $103. So those were the previous things that you found. For the, uh, the downtown campus, the mean of that one, you end up getting by doing 15 times 55, which gives you 825. And you get the standard deviation of that one by doing 2.3 times 55, which gives you $126.50. So let's go ahead and now find the total of these. So we're adding together our variables. So to find the total mean, it's going to be kind of exactly what you expect it to be. You add together the mean of the downtown, which is 73250 and the mean of the main, which is, um, or I mixed those up. So the mean of the downtown is 825. The mean of the main is 732.50. So the overall mean cost for, if you were to choose one random student from each one, would be $1,557.50. The standard deviation, remember, is the harder one here. You are going to use the variances, and then you're going to add them together. Then you take their square root. So to find the standard deviation, 
you're going to do 103 squared plus 126.5 squared, you end up getting $163.13 for that standard deviation. Before we do the next example, I actually want to give you one other little set of short notes, and that has to do with subtracting random variables. So in this one, I'm going to call it D for the difference, and I'm going to say D equals T minus U. So um, the mean is going to be pretty straightforward. It's going to be exactly what you think. You're going to subtract your means. The standard deviation, on the other hand, is one of the most confusing things in the class that you'll see. So when we're working with standard deviations of more than one thing, what happens when you subtract is your standard deviation is not going to get smaller. It's actually, believe it or not, it's going to get bigger. Whenever you're combining random variables of any sort, standard deviations get bigger. Things get further from the mean because it's, they're less consistent when you're working with more than one variable. So what's going to happen is you are going to actually add your two standard deviations. This should be a sigma. So you are going to be adding your standard deviations. So we'll do some practice with this. It's very difficult for people to understand, so if you're not um, understanding it, you're not alone. Most people are probably in the same boat as you um, that are taking AP statistics, but just know that when you're combining random variables, the standard deviation tends to get bigger, not smaller, and if you were to subtract, it would get smaller. So let's go ahead and do this example. So um, it has to do with, with it's kind of similar to what you had in number six, except now you're going to take the, um, the students at the main campus and the downtown campus, and you're going to subtract them. Thankfully, the mean or the expected value of these students is going to just be subtracting um, the two means that you had already. So we're doing t minus u. You're going to end up doing mu of t, which is 732.50, minus the mu of u, which is 825. And you do actually get a negative answer. That's fine. That happens sometimes. That just tells us that the, um, the, the people at the downtown campus are paying a little bit more. The standard deviation, remember, this is where we're going to add our variances. So the, the standard deviation of your main campus is 103. We're going to square it. You're going to add that to the standard deviation of your downtown campus which is 126.50, your overall standard deviation is going to be $163.13.